Tell us about the first time you met Shima Sensei. Shima Sensei was really, he's always a main guy. And he said, okay, you guys want to do karate? That's fine. And let me see what kind of shape you get. So we do it about 50 push up, 50 set ups, 50 squat, 50 squat up, all kinds of stuff like this. Yeah. That, was, you know, that was not too, too bad for us. That was the first day. And second day, we, we went there the night, we did a catch stunts up and, up and down, back and forth for a half hour. You know how that you lay, baby. <laughs> so we had about three steps and going down to from the dojo. So that step was, I feel like, about 30 steps. <laughs> they were so tired. So, so what was the dojo like? I mean, they didn't have mats or anything back then, right? No, we were only four. And, uh, Beginning and end, or sometime in the summertime in the middle, we had to uh, uh, clean the floor because you know it gets sweaty and you put sweat on the floor. So we take the rag and make it wet and push with hand and kind of like you're doing like a back yeah, almost. <laughs> that was the uh, you know warming up the beginning class and uh, halfway through. We usually take the 2G because they're all, oh, they're so hot and uh, get sweaty easy. So usually the class was about two hour class. So first first half hour is exercise, you know, warming up exercise and uh, cutter basics, uh, cutter training. And after that we will wipe the floor again and change the gear. To uh, dry gear, and then we're gonna do all the uh, committed technique more stuff. So then we finish up the exercise again, and that was about two hour, two and a half hour training. And how often did you do that? Five five days a week. Five days a week. Yeah, sometimes six. Yeah, and you, dude, sometimes you train more than once a day, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the, uh, the dojo is uh, a little different than it is nowadays, huh? <laughs> well, usually over there, dojo is open all the time. So if you have time, you just go in the training. Even, uh, you know, like last time, that's how we did. Okay. So the, the Shima dojo was a little bit different than other dojos there, right? Yeah. So there was a lot of different instructors. Um, tell us a little more about Shima Sensei. Well, you said he was mean. So what was he like? He was actually... <laughs> uh, uh, his uh, his fa fa uh, favorite technique was front kick. I mean, and even now, I've been training most of us for over 50 years, and still, I don't think nobody can uh, do front kick that fast and that strong. And when he kicked, and you snap out, you can hear a snap, and bring in the back chamber, you can hear the heel hit to his back. So that fast. Uh, he can kick. I mean, a lot of time, you know, he just will kick and stuff. And we'll, we try to block it, but we just let him uh, win that out. <laughs> so he, he didn't take it easy on you guys? No, no, no. He <laughs> never did that. And some, one day he was uh, at a, some kind of meeting and went, uh, uh, went out. And we're doing, uh, we're doing class. Almost almost end of the class. But, uh, We've been doing about an hour and a half, something like that. He came home. He come back to the dojo. He goes, come on, eh, I'm going to drop. <laughs> he said, hey, guys, you guys kind of did a week. Do the push-ups. So we was doing push-ups for about half hour. I don't know how many push-ups we did. And that was one day. And then about a month later, it was the kind of same situation. And we ended up doing the setups for about half hour, 45 minutes. You know how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he was a pretty tough guy. I know um, another uh, since he was another instructor that you, you talk about a lot. I mean, tell tell us about him. I get older brother, older brother Kishimoto. Yeah, older brother Kishimoto. Well, he was uh, kind of like a more uh, what you what do you say? You don't 
you can't expect what you're gonna do next. So he's unpredictable. <laughs> unpredictable. So, <laughs> and uh, when he do that, say like when do the exercise, he do so fast. He, he said, follow me. That's what he does. And he move it. And the, most of the time he come to teach the fight integrity. So I do that. And uh, when we do spar with him, like you feel like he, he the smart with the, you know, steel. Piece of steel, or something. It was you know, so painful, and the, you know we, we, we can't say ouch because he, if you say ouch, like okay, you, you get a second one. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I know you talked about sparring with him. What, what was that like? I know he had some interesting techniques that he would do, like jumping on your back. And yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. He's just uh, kind of like uh, you know, if you do. Uh, Say like you do kusan kuro cartridge, uh, and the one part you jump and turn the face out of the way, and so he he, he uses that kind of stuff and you punch it. And next thing you know, he's a jump out there and you stand on your back in the hip, <laughs> and that kind of stuff and take him down. Uh, and pretty crazy, and uh, we're doing a couple of people you know, next to each other doing squat steps. So he come over and jump on the leg. So each day, yeah, each person. And so we have to, you know, who's that moving? If you're moving, he gotta do it again. So try to hold on tight, all that kind of stuff. Then we turn around, face out of the way, he gotta do the other leg. <laughs> yeah, that was a very, very hard. Yeah, so he, uh, he had some interesting stories about him. Uh, and tell us about the, the the, the fence, the privacy fence at the dojo? Oh. <laughs> Me and my friend who was punching my to, you know, try to, you know, kind of like a kilo time and all that stuff. And uh, so I was going to say he was uh, training in the floor. And uh, we was in, you know, kind of like a, see what he doing, kind of pay attention a little bit. But we had a private uh, wood fence. And he didn't have a lot called this. We see somebody, the eyeball over there, somebody watching there. So, Frank, someone said he came over to us, he was kind of like talking. Everything, oh, oh. we know is somebody said, ouch. So he stick there, in the in his finger onto the hole through his eye. <laughs> Which was, that was pretty, you know, pretty amazing technique. <laughs> so it was the you know, was high school there. I guess, you know, tell us more about that. So, like, that's how you guys tested your skills? That, you know, you fight with people? And usually, like usually we're out of high school and right? we're a little bit get older, so we're out to drink a little bit and uh, stuff. And so they kind of just you know, tell us, and say, hey, why don't you do that technique to walk around to find us? The best, best way to find out is go to Bar Street. In Japan, Okinawa, the back then they had we call it Bar Street, and they're all in the one street, put in a bar there, so they don't affect the other uh, subdivision. So we go there and find some uh, you know khaki guys and want to fight and stuff, and we just practice like that. And uh, one 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 day. We had a friend who come to train with the uh, U.S. military, and them guys, a couple of guys had a uh, you know, MP, military police. So they called us and said, hey, we're going to have a ride up there in a certain place. So we said, yeah, let's go. So we never went to wait there. So I picked the one biggest guy. He was six foot, five four or five. And, you know, his shoulder was so wide, you know, I can see his other side. So this guy is just was half drunk, you know, so I heard people and stuff. So I go up there, I punch his stomach and punch his face. He smiled at me. He smiled and said, Oh, okay. I said, I don't know what I'm gonna do this time. So I use the I open hand, I use the palm of my heel to smack his face to the you know, eye, nose, the mouth and chin. He was fall down the floor. So I, I, next day I go back to the dozer, I call the sensei, I say, hey, 
Let's take it into works pretty good. He said, well, you busy, you'll find out some technical works. <laughs> <laughs> I see, that was different times back then. Um, so, you know, did you, uh, I guess, Shuma Dojo was known for having like a lot of sparring training. Was that was that common at the time in Okinawa? No, Okinawa was uh, not many. Uh, Dojo was doing actually free sparring, and uh, like which two people was doing pretty much, and and other other Dojo is more concentrated on kata training and the condition and that kind of stuff. And uh, of course, you know, most of us. Training is you gotta do you know make your body stronger first, then you can use the technique. So some those will never grow up, grow out making the foundation training. And we did a lot of uh, sparring type things. But of course, it's not point sparring; it's all you know cross fighting. And uh, I got uh, you know busted a few times, broken nose. Few times, it was the eye, almost lost the eye, that kind of stuff. But it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you didn't have any safety equipment back then, no gloves. No, or that that was all the bare, bare hand, and the roof floor, the joint and stuff. Uh, you have to know how to get, do the break for. You don't you you know you can hurt yourself on the roof floor. So did you have an advantage with the takedowns growing up doing Okinawan sumo and judo and stuff like that? Yes, yes, I I, I think I did, yeah. So once somebody grabbed me, I know how to, you know, get out, throw it, or cut to there, you know, rip off, that kind of stuff. So it's helped me out even now. So I know, I know a lot of people ask about this. Did you do tournaments back then? No, we didn't have much tournament. Uh, Okinawa because uh, the most tournament is the mainland in Japan and uh, the Okinawan people they don't want to do the sports karate so that's, that was the main thing training ball to you know, cross the wheel uh, or situation where come back so self, self defense is, yes. that is the main yes main thing is self defense so you have to make your body stronger to do that. So that's the main thing to do a lot of, you have to do a lot of exercise to get ready for the technique. But you had uh, people from other dojos and stuff would come and challenge, right? Yeah, sometimes they do. Yeah, that was a fun thing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I guess that, that would be the equivalent of today's tournament is just fighting somebody that you don't know or training, training with, sparring with somebody yeah. you don't know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, all right, I forgot to ask this earlier. I've got one more one more story to ask you about. So I I know when I was a kid, we used to tell a story about uh, like you had a cousin that got kidnapped one time. Um, can you tell us about that? Well, it's not much a story, but yeah. <laughs> she got kidnapped to a, a, a yakuza vampires. So. My friends and his uh, like all the brother and stuff in the kind of you know in a yakuza group and stuff. So I have to f talk to them guys to find out you know my cousin. So one day when we went there, to talk talking to some of the yakuza guys, and they look at me and I and say start backing up. I say I don't know why you know they scared me. But I made on, I found out, you know, my little finger was missing. <laughs> <laughs> so many the Yakuza people, they get out of the group, they usually cut out the finger, give, give it to boss. That's the they, they thought I, you know, I did that. So. <laughs> <laughs> so you got lucky. Yeah, I got very lucky. <laughs> I guess those are some uh, some pretty scary guys to deal with. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so and this was when you were in high school, right? Yeah. 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 So. Pretty interesting childhood growing up like that. Um, okay, so um, you spent some time, you know, did the dojo training. Um, how did the Shima dojo um, fall in line with like the Nagamine dojo? Like, what's uh, the relationship there? Shima sensei is a teacher, is a Nagamine sensei. So the, actually, Shima dojo is a branch from the Nagamine, Nagamine was headquarters. 
And also we have another teacher called Takamoto Sensei. So he was a he was, he was about five foot two, someone like that, short but very strong guy for his size. Uh, he was the most amazing uh, most of those, even still people all the people still talk about him. And uh, he's uh, when he moves say like when the cut and the turn and stuff, it's very hard to see how fast he can turn. So that was my goal to be like him. Um, I guess on a side note, um, how did you get started with uh, your mind, like your money, like meeting uh, Shabu Sensei and the humor brother and, and all that? Well, we was uh, start karate and uh, like you know, a couple of years later, I said, hey, we need something different than, you know, the kata training, fighting training, like that, and you may have a weapon. So the Okinawans, uh, uh, knowing is a weapon, Okinawan weapon training. So we asked Kisabu say, all the Kisabu say, hey, uh, you know anybody in the good uh, weapon uh, practitioner? And he was saying, uh, yeah, yeah, I kind of know. And uh, he didn't say exactly that right way. And he said, okay, let me, let me teach you basic first. And uh, he, he kind of like showed me how to swing the ball, uh, with the size, and come on, he was, he was very uh, famous in the common, so he did a common stuff. Anyway, uh, about three months later, he said, hey, come to my house. I said, okay. And his uh, younger brother was able to see him in the back, back then. So he said, hey, well, upstairs, we have the little dojo type thing upstairs. So I went there, and his younger brother started swinging a ball. And we didn't see his ball, we just hear the noise. And of course, in the outside, a little bit dark, but uh, the car, we said, oh, maybe dark, what's wrong with the city ball? I was, you know, uh, we were we still kids, you know. So next time we go back there at daytime, we still wouldn't see the ball. We <laughs> <laughs> said, wait a minute, this is the you know, weird things. That's how we started. So the way he did, so one technique, for one month. So say that, you know, you do the Kesa Uts and you do Kesa Uts, teach you how to do the both side. We will have training for one month. If you skip, he will know, and you know, because the technique is now improving. So we swing the ball, swing the ball, and, and people, you know, it's so tired. My shoulder, my arm is so tired, even we can use a chapstick. <laughs> so I wish we had, that time I, you know, I think I wish we had a fork or a knife, uh, you know, spoon, so <laughs> <laughs> it's easier. <laughs> yeah, so what, what was he like when uh, when, he, when he would teach you? Because I, I know when I met him, he was really quiet, like he's really soft. He's spoken. always quiet, he didn't, he didn't talk much, and he's, uh, when you set up his training, the, uh, Swing, swing the ball and stuff. He don't even he don't look at you. He just close your eyes, listen to the sound. And he 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 nodded his head and then move to the next technique. So that can start. Every once in a while he look at you and say, "Can you see your ball yet?" <laughs> that type of things. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, you've been through all this training also, so. Yeah, that was an interesting experience. <laughs> that yeah. he fell asleep. 